Unsportsmanlike penalty flag on the play for illegal touching of a doorknob. Yeah, guys, look, I understand that, you know, walking in your lawn care business when you're first getting started can be real difficult. Getting customers can be even harder. But look, if we don't have a game plan set up, that's where we're going to fail. I know a lot of guys out there listening to people on YouTube telling them to go do this and do that. But again, we got to understand we're in a different space and place. The new lawn care guy is not the same as the old lawn care guy who's been doing it for 10, 12 years. We need to put ourselves in the right space and place. And the way we do that is by getting us a game plan for us. So let's do a deep dive into this game plan that I put together from 20 years of experience for working with the world's leaders while I was carried. So let's see what we can do. Let's go. First part of our game plan is going to be the customer approach, right? So when you're approaching customers, we want to make sure that we're giving that customer the impression, one, that we know what we're doing. Two, we got to know what we're doing. And the way you do that is by breaking down the customer, right? Anytime you meet a customer, it's always a good idea. And the best thing to do is to smile. That breaks all the tension for one. And therefore, they feel like you're not, you know, they're not approaching you in the wrong possible way. So the first part of the game plan is that customer approach. When we approach them, we want to make sure we greet them with a smile, make sure we're there and open to help them out with their situation. Again, guys, we're problem solvers. And smiling is the first part of it. Then after we smile, we got to kind of take in what the customer is talking about. What kind of problem do they have that we can solve in their yard? Look at it like this. We can see more problems in their yard than probably they can once you get good at it. So that's one of the things you want to start scoping out when you're walking up to a customer's yard. You want to make sure that you're just not shooting in the blind and saying, hey, look, this is how much I'm going to charge. That can get yourself in a lot of trouble and wind up doing a lot more work than what it's worth. But again, you learn through the process. And that's one of these things. This whole game plan is a process. Got to make sure we stand on task. The first part of that is that customer approach. We're going to do a deep dive a little bit more into it in another video, but let's go ahead and jump into the second part of the game plan is equipment. I don't know how many times I see guys out there now with equipment and it's a solo guy and a lot of them, again, on YouTube with four and five weed eaters. They got two, three, zero turns to stand on more, showing you the setup. Look, if that works for them, it works for them. Again, we're in a different space and place. We don't have to do all that to be successful. To me, that's putting, you know, what they call the cart before the horse. And so we can't operate like that. That's not going to be a game plan that's going to work for us. So we want to make sure we're getting the right equipment. Off top, I'm going to tell you, your most important piece of equipment that you're going to have is going to be that weed eater. You got to stay on top of your weed eaters, have your weed eater knowledge. And in my opinion, again, in the space and place that I'm in, I would say two weed eaters are always going to be a good idea. And that's because your weed eaters are going to use it the most, right? And that's the one that you're going to kind of you know, refine your craft with. That's what you work on with your craft. You hold that in your hand more than anything. It gets you in some tight places that, you know, your lawnmower can't get you. And the reason why I say two is, again, they will break down at the most inconvenient times. So that's why I say two weed ears is always a good idea. I recommend the Echo brand. You may want to have you one that's just a straight shaft. Uh, you may want to also get you one that is uh, has the capabilities for attachments on it. That's important, you know, therefore you're not going back and trying to get a weed eater to do straight edging with. You can get one and switch out the attachments. So we're going to do an even further dive in, uh, you know, what type of lawnmower you might want to go with, whether you need a zero turn off top or if you want to start off with a push mow again in a whole separate video. We're going to kind of keep this one short just to give you guys, a, you know, a game plan to go with. Get this information, write it down, and when we do the other videos, we can dive back in and check out uh, in a little bit more detail as far as what you guys are going to need. Number three is going to be a money plan. we got to have a good money plan going for us. If you don't have a good money plan, 
then uh, everything else fails. And when I say a money plan, I'm talking about how much money you as an individual want to make. Hold yourself accountable to that. And what I mean, when I say hold yourself accountable to that, it's always a way to actually price your service to where you're not having to have, you know, cut 50 yards a week in order to be successful in lawn care, right? We got to make sure that we're, you know, proficient in all the other areas of lawn care, whether it's being doing flower beds, whether it's, you know, trimming bushes, things like that. Some areas like here, you may need to go ahead and get a certification to get those type of things done. But, you know, those are ways to add more income to your business without, you know, having to cut, like I say, 50 yards a week. That's a lot for one person to be cutting. You know, you can space them out. You can get it done. But just think if you could cut that 50 yards a week down to 40 yards a week and make the same amount of money, if not more because of the fact that you, you know, have those other skill sets already developed. So again, we'll do another deep dive into that money plan on how much you're going to want to make an hour, how much you're going to make a week in another additional video. Let's jump in to the fourth quarter. Let's go. Now, I know most sports fourth quarter is usually the last quarter, but we might go into overtime. So stay tuned. Fourth quarter is all going to be about your branding and how you're going to brand yourself. Uh, every time you see me, you're probably going to see me with a shirt like this on or some kind of logo representing my business, especially when I'm out, you know, working. Uh, and I usually have my hat on. So that's part of the branding there. One of the ways that you separate yourself away from other people is through the branding. People think branding is marketing and there's a difference. You know, uh, we associate certain symbols with certain stuff. It just is what it is, certain colors. So if you see, you know, you see a sign driving down the road and that sign is, you know, yellow and red with some arches, guess what? We're going to, you know, recognize that as a McDonald's. And when I say by that, you can go anywhere and put those golden arches on the outside of an auto parts store. And I guarantee you, they're going to be sold out of whatever they're selling by lunchtime. You know, it's just the present people, what people expect when they see those golden arches. They got to, you got to have that same capability in your business. And that is not McDonald's selling. That is them branding themselves with a certain, you know, aura with the way that they operate, you know, and the way that you, you expect, your expectations are always going to be the same, no matter which one you go to. So, that's how you're going to separate yourself from everybody else with your branding. And branding may be something as simple as just weed eating the complete boulevard and making it look like it's been mowed, you know, things like that. And even crispier, you know, uh, taking your time to make sure you're edging around the flower beds, things like that, instead of just going through there and just cutting and going home, you know. So those are things we'll talk about uh, also in the fourth quarter. But guess what? It's overtime. So let's do a deep dive. Let's go. Overtime is all about mentorship. Mentorship is going to be the key foundation to anyone's success. I don't care what type of business you're in or where you see them. If you see anybody out there that's been successful, it's the reason why they've had mentorship. They've had somebody to kind of guide them and show them the way. Uh, I realize that a lot of people are doing this through video now. So, you know, you have the opportunity. And I know at the beginning I talked about, you know, the, the, you know, the older guys that are out there on YouTube giving some advice that may not fit. But again, we need to make sure that we're taking that in as, you know, as we see fit for our business. There's nothing wrong with anything that they're telling you. It's just not going to work for the space and place that we're in. So with that being said, Again, we got to come up with our own way of getting mentorship, find somebody that you're a little bit more relatable to and see if they can kind of help you along the journey. That's why I'm doing this to see if I can find people who, you know, want to help me along with this journey. All this is about learning and getting better. And the way this all developed was by me having my mentorship when I first started my business. And again, the, the value that you're going to get out of having a mentorship, going to working for somebody, you're going to get paid while you're doing it. 
And you just need to be upfront with them. Let them know, hey, look, I'm trying to start my own lawn care business. This is what I got going on. And guys, I know what it's like. I've, I've been there. There's, there are a lot of lawn care guys who may not want to help. Hey, keep pushing. Find somebody that you know can help, want to help. There are a lot of them out there. I've, they've had lawn care guys who don't even know me give me yards before. So the idea that there may not be somebody out there for you is, is really on you and you trying to find somebody, like I said, that you can relate to. And that's all done through that mentorship, whether it's dealing with customers, you know, what your schedule should look like, uh, whether you should be cutting in the rain, what kind of equipment, all that can be accomplished also through the mentorship. So guys, it's been fun. Let me catch you in the next one. And don't forget about those four to five different videos you should be seeing coming soon. Thanks again. Let's go.